There are some scripts David Wise wrote that absolutely make me wonder. They make me wonder if his writing studio is in the dungeon of some old German castle with mechanical typewriters surrounded by candles in the formation of a pentacle in the first edition of the Necronomicon X Mortis beside it. Through the door is one of those scripts. From what dark corner of hell does he summon the power to write a script like this? Nah, I'm just kidding. There's no dark powers here. However, this episode is absolutely insane. Poe went up with a few of the Pegasus exploring uncharted territory. North Star is giddy to boldly go where no pony's gone before, but Lofty's tired of seeing nothing but barren rock. Fortunately, the monotony is interrupted by a giant door. North Star wants to open the door despite the sign on stating otherwise, but Paradise used up most of her stupid points for the season last episode, so she has to lay down the law with her. This could be THE Golden Door. It was forged a thousand years ago by a sorcerer, which is why the sign has modern English block letters, though it might be made of the same psychic paper that the doctor uses. But either way, the sorcerer created the door so that he could dump some fearsome monster in the land of legend so they could deal with it instead. The door will remain sealed so long as no one from the Pony Land side goes through it, so they should leave it alone. Curiosity of yours, North Star, and stay away from that door! Remember that line from Paradise. Unfortunately, while almost out, Paradise has just enough stupid points left to fly off to leave North Star and Lofty to their devices. However, North Star is this episode's designated idiot, as she doesn't believe Paradise. Uh, uh, no, she said this. And stay away from that door. That includes don't open it. North Star pushes the door open, but there's nothing but missing on the other side, so she closes it up. Unfortunately, it must be one of those doors that if you don't close it just right, it won't close completely, because just as they fly off, the door swings open and arrow flies out. Of course, the arrow belongs to Robin Hood as he and his merry men come out the door. They're looking for someone to rob, but when the ponies say that they're short on cash, the merry men break down and cry. However, Robin Hood decides to check the place out and calls everybody else out. Legends of Mist begin pouring out of the door like Paul Bunyan and Aladdin. However, Hercules comes out in a panic and says it's coming. Well, whatever can make Hercules crap his toga is a very bad thing, so they close the door behind them. The mist scatter and lofty figures the monster Paradise was talking about was what had him so scared. Speaking of Paradise, she's now with Heartthrob picking flowers. Heartthrob is an interesting pony. She actually appeared in Escape from Katrina as a voiceless character, but in the series she was played as a constantly lovesick pony calling everyone darling and commenting on how things are romantic. Heartthrob is feeling particularly lovesick today as she wants a true love to fall madly in love with. Unfortunately, they're short on males in the show, so Paradise says that she has to wait until next year when they start releasing Big Brother ponies. However, Heartthrob is something different in mind. And this is where the episode starts to really go into the insane category. Heartthrob is romantically attracted to humans. Her image of her true love is a handsome human man. And I can't believe My Little Pony is compelling me to give my definition of bestiality. To me, the definition of bestiality is this. It is a sentient life form committing a sex act with a non-sentient life form. Body type has nothing to do with it. It's about intelligence and cognition. Therefore, heartthrob wanting some human is not bestiality. Ironically, her wanting a horse, like some have suggested in comments to this episode, would be bestiality under this definition. This definition also means that scene from Sonic 2006 wouldn't be bestiality either, but it doesn't save the game from being terrible for just about every other reason. However, I'm still going to mock this for all it's worth. Well, Prince Charming shows up sporting his butt chin. He apparently has a thing for quadrupeds as he starts making the moves. However, instead of Heartthrob, who's ready to throw herself at him, Charming prefers his mares all natural as he's after paradise. Then he knows his galaxy who apparently fulfills his eye fetish and goes after her. Heartthrob wants a do-over while paradise thinks something's up. Back at Paradise Estate, we learn the myths are all strange, like Hercules is a neat freak. Sheherazade is also teaching the baby ponies to belly dance, even though their bellies are on their underside. And they're frickin' babies! Buns, Licky, Split, and Wind Whistle in the meantime are having a picnic, but Licky, Split is wary of the few clouds overhead. Buns gets out the lamp that she got from land and starts cleaning it. And just run a cord up through the base and install a socket in the spout. People do it all the time. 
Buzz apparently rubs the lamp the right way as the genie living in it comes out. He's ready to give out three wishes and lucky split wishes for a perfect day. However, the genie's going to need some details. For those of you who like heat stroke in five seconds, actually listening to the genie ask for all these particulars makes this holder of a meteorology degree grin. Lofty reads North Star the riot act as they're now up to their withers and mess. She also brings up what Paradise said about a monster and to mention the M word sends Robin Hood and his merry men into a panic. Speaking of the monster, Heartthrob's gone looking for Prince Omnifa in the land of legends because she somehow figured out where the door was and left it open for the monster to get out and set up the cliffhanger. Part 2 opens with the monster coming out of the door and Robin Hood teaching North Star archery because she's British and would make a fine recruit. However, using a bow and arrow with your mouth doesn't work too well. Robin tries to show her how it's done but misses the shot, and he takes this like a bad golfer. Hercules, in the meantime, is done with the inside of Paradise Estate and decides to go to the outside. Just let me clean what's underneath. Because it's not like what's underneath is supposed to be dirt. Unfortunately, Hercules' strength decides now's a good time to take a vacation, and he drops Paradise Estate. Now he's going. Now you have to clean up the inside all over again. Now yeah, let's see what Prince Omnifile's doing. My dear, all my life my heart has yearned for one as fair as you. Oh no. You and you and you. Oh good God, no! Dave, they're baby sea ponies, babies. And they would get him pregnant! Actually, Charming is just racking up a body count as his only true love is himself. However, his true love has gained a wrinkle. My perfect face, it's ruined! One wrinkle isn't your worst feature so long as your quote-unquote perfect face has its own butt. Sherazad isn't having trouble dancing, but she is having monster trouble as they have to run for it. In the meantime, the literally literal genie has gained a crowd as Lickety Split is apparently going to have to write her master's thesis on atmospheric science to get her wish. She decides to switch over to her true passion ice cream, however even ice cream isn't immune to needing the details. Pardon me, but I believe I can expedite matters. <clears throat> Lickety Split would like a 200 foot sugar cone filled with 200 scoops of rocky roll. Each scoop to be 4 feet in diameter and the entire confection should be covered with 2 tons of chocolate jimmies. You got it! Will Whistler, don't ever change. The genie conjures an ice cream cone the size of the space needle, however, unlike the space needle, the cone is pointing side down so it topples over. Fortunately, it disappears before it crushes anyone. Ice cream cone should have lasted long enough for you to eat it. So you're saying that it would have disappeared in her stomach? Heartthrob apparently left the land of legends and has come back looking for Prince Butchin again. However, now the place is falling apart. Things are also getting strange at Megan's as all of her storybooks are blank. Paradise shows up and tells her about all the myths and legends they've met, and Megan said that they're only characters and stories which are now missing. She decides to head to Ponyland and meets with Robin Hood and the others. However, the monster is also headed to the little get-together. To Not the voice I was expecting from a terrible, awful monster that strikes fear into even Hercules. While most everyone heads for cover, the baby ponies decide to put the monster through obedience training because the baby ponies always save the day in David Wise scripts. The monster heals and apologizes. Mega realizes the monster is being a monster because it's the monster like all the others are what they are because they are what they are. And I guess that makes some kind of sense. Hartog then shows up looking to get some princely action and tell the others that the Land of Legends is falling apart. They decide to head back, but plan to be short one monster because he's always causing trouble and needing to be put in his place. However, the monster has his job, even if it's to be nasty so the heroes can beat him up. The mist capitulate, which makes the monster so happy, gives them all a monster side group hug. They return, North Star says goodbye to Robin Hood, who comments that they'll always be around. Megan closes the door and they head back to clean up Paradise Estate. North Star's still depressed, but they find the books Megan brought, which are now full of stories again. This cheers up North Star to know that they'll still be close to her to close out the episode. Through the Door is an episode with a very strange appeal. It doesn't hook you in with the story or the actions of the characters. It's not even so bad as good like the Great Rainbow Caper. 
on its face, it's actually really terrible. North Star is even dumber than Paradise was in the previous episode, but never makes up for it. However, this episode is so outrageous about being terrible, you have to watch it. The myths are so flanderized, farce is too kind of a word for it. There's also the whole heartthrob pining for a human thing added for flavor. Coupled with the fact that the episode never winks at the camera and all this insanity only makes it more eye-catching. That's why this episode gets the unusual rating of bad car accident. There's not much appealing in and of itself in this episode outside of the genie and Wind Whistler, but the episode is so outrageous you can't help but watch because you have to see it for yourself. Through the Door would also mark the end of new episodes for Season 1. The week in the season would end with repeating the pilot now named Rescue at Midnight Castle. Season 2 would come the following year as sadly things come to an end for Hasbro back cartoons. That's how we do the dance of the seven veins.